Hello, hello, and welcome back to Bake Lore and More. I'm Steph, your guide to the quirky, curious corners of culture, and today we're diving into some of the most entertaining and unexpected rivalries out there. Now I know what you're thinking. Are we really going to talk about Biggie versus Tupac again? Ha, <laughs> nope. We're focusing on the beefs that are a little bit more rare, off the beaten path. Talking about Wagyu, if you will. From rock bands to lifestyle gurus and even animated characters, we've got a wild ride ahead. So grab your popcorn, settle in, and let's get to it. Jack White, the former frontman of the White Stripes and the Black Keys, have been engaged in a long-standing feud that has captivated rock music fans for years. This beef isn't just about music, it's about originality, authenticity, and of course, a bit of rock star ego. The origins of this rivalry date back to the early 2000s when the Black Keys started gaining popularity with their bluesy rock sound, which some fans and critics found strikingly similar to the White Stripes style. Jack White, known for his strong opinions and dedication to his craft, took issue with what he saw as the Black Keys imitation of his work. In a series of leaked emails from 2014, Jack White expressed his frustrations, calling out the Black Keys directly. He accused them of copying his sound and riding on the coattails of his success. This led to a public back and forth, with members of the Black Keys defending their originality and expressing disappointment in White's accusations. One particularly intense incident in this feud occurred when Jack White allegedly blocked the Black Keys from using a Nashville recording studio. Reports suggest that White was so incensed by their presence that he went to great lengths to ensure they couldn't work there. This act of territoriality underscored the depth of White's disdain and the competitive nature of their relationship. Despite the tensions, both acts continued to thrive in their careers. The Black Keys went on to release successful albums like El Camino and Turn Blue, while Jack White pursued solo projects and other collaborations. The feud even saw a brief ceasefire when White praised the Black Keys album Brothers in a rare moment of goodwill. In interviews, both sides have occasionally made attempts to downplay the feud, but subtle digs continue to emerge. In the end, the Jack White versus the Black Keys feud is a testament to the competitive spirit that often drives artists to greatness. It's a classic case of two talented entities clashing over creative differences with both sides ultimately benefiting from the rivalry in terms of artistic growth and public attention. In the world of lifestyle brands, few rivalries are as deliciously entertaining as that between Martha Stewart and Gwyneth Paltrow. These two queens of domesticity have been at odds since Paltrow launched her lifestyle brand Goop, which many saw as a direct competitor to Stewart's well-established empire. Stewart, who had been a pioneer in the industry, made several thinly veiled comments implying that Paltrow was an amateur encroaching on her territory. What do you think of the news that Gwyneth Paltrow is selling a candle cloth that smells like my vagina at Goop? And that it smells like Mars and what? No. My oh, vagina. So that she has a candle. It's on kind of cool. Oh, it smells like my vagina. And it's well, sold know. out. I'm sure it's sold out. I mean, she, she does um, that kind of irritating... We, you know, she, she's trying to, she's trying to juice up the public to listen to her. Okay. And that's great. I mean, let her do her thing. Okay. And, um, and I, I, I wouldn't buy that candle. In a 2014 interview with Porter Magazine, Stewart famously said, She just needs to be quiet. She's a movie star. If she were confident in her acting, she wouldn't be trying to be Martha Stewart. The two continued to trade barbs through interviews and media appearances, each trying to outdo the other in the battle for lifestyle supremacy. Um, so this is what Martha Stewart said about Gwyneth a couple of weeks ago. This was well before the Lisa announcement, and okay. in fact, she just needs to be quiet. She's a movie star. If she were confident in her acting, she wouldn't be trying to be Martha Stewart. Uh, so, meow. Um, uh, so Gwyneth, how, so what's your reaction to that? Um, first of all, no one has ever said anything bad about me before, so I'm <laughs> shocked and devastated. I'm trying to recover. Um, um, you know, if I'm really honest, 
I am so psyched that she sees us as competition. <laughs> like, I'm so psyched. I really am. So that's true. It means your fate is sealed as lifestyle world domination, <laughs> right? Um, so, I mean, do you, speaking of public criticism, do you feel, does it get easier over time? I mean, you do get, uh, you know, like, like many people in your shoes, you get public criticism. Yeah. Do you, how do you, in this case, where it's a business thing, do you yeah. feel like when someone is attacking your business versus mm -hmm. attacking you personally, is there a different reaction in you? I think that when anybody criticizes anyone, um, it really is just, it's revealing more about where they are in time and space as opposed to where you are in time and space. And I think um, generally we tend to, you know, lash out if we're in a, you know what I mean? It's usually a reflection of something else. And so I try not to, I don't actually, at this point in my life, I don't, I don't take it personally. I see it as a, as a projection and, you know, and then if there's ever anything, you know, that sticks, then I know, oh, maybe I'm holding this judgment against myself and I need to look at that. Um, but it's, it's, it's very interesting. And, you know, sometimes I learn good things from criticism. So, you like know. you're going to tell me for life suspects. The rivalry escalated in 2014 when Stewart published a pie recipe called Conscious Coupling, a not-so-subtle jab at Paltrow's infamous term, conscious uncoupling, used during her divorce from Chris Martin. Paltrow responded in goop with a Thanksgiving recipe titled Jailbird Cake, poking fun at Stewart's time in prison. Despite their rivalry, both women have maintained successful careers. Stewart continues to expand her brand with new ventures and collaborations, while Paltrow's Goop has grown into a multi-million dollar business, complete with wellness summits and a Netflix series. Goop's unconventional and sometimes controversial products, like the Jade Egg and the Vampire Repellent Spray, have garnered significant media attention, keeping Paltrow in the spotlight and often contrasting sharply with Stewart's more traditional approach. It's like watching two queens fight for the throne, but instead of swords, they're using recipes and wellness tips. Who knew lifestyle advice could be so cutthroat? Kanye West, never one to shy away from controversy, has found himself in a surprising number of feuds with animated characters. Yes, you heard that right. Kanye has beefed with cartoons. One of the earliest instances was his reaction to a 2009 episode of South Park titled Fish Sticks, which depicted him as unable to understand a simple joke about fish sticks. In the episode, characters continuously make a joke that goes, do you like fish sticks? Then you must be a gay fish, which Kanye doesn't get, leading to the portrayal of him as a humorless, self-absorbed individual. The most racist thing a person could tell me is that I'm supposed to choose something based on my race. If that was the case, I wouldn't have never wore a pink polo. I wouldn't have never wear skinny jeans. Everywhere I go, people pants smaller than mine. And I'm the one who, you eat fish sticks because I have skinny jeans on. The episode became one of the most memorable in South Park history, cementing the show's reputation for fearlessly targeting celebrities. But the hilarity doesn't stop there. In 2021, Kanye found himself in an unexpected feud with Peppa Pig. After the release of his album Donda, Peppa Pig's official Twitter account cheekily pointed out that her album, Peppa's Adventures, the album, had a higher rating on review aggregator Metacritic, sparking a humorous online exchange. The tweet read, Peppa didn't need to host listening parties in Mercedes-Benz Stadium to get that bump to five. Kanye did not publicly respond but the internet had a field day with the playful rivalry between a hip-hop titan and a beloved children's character. Then there's his beef with The Cleveland Show. Kanye voiced a character on the show named Kenny West, which seemed like a playful nod to his persona. However, reports suggest that behind the scenes, there were tensions regarding the portrayal and how closely it mirrored his real-life controversies. Despite these tensions, Kanye returned to voice Kenny West in multiple episodes, indicating a willingness to engage with the parody, despite any personal reservations. 
Kanye's beefs with animated characters are just another chapter in his saga of unexpected and often hilarious conflicts. It's like watching your favorite cartoon characters suddenly break the fourth wall and start arguing with the artist who created them. These animated feuds serve as a reminder that even the most serious celebrities can find themselves at the mercy of satire and humor, whether they like it or not. Well, thanks for joining me on this journey through some of the wildest and most entertaining beefs out there. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment on your favorite rivalry or suggest the next one for us to cover next time. I'm Steph, and this has been Bake Laura Moore. See you next time for more curious and quirky corners of culture. Bye!